Rafael Valdez. He's one of the hottest in-demand tattoo artists on the planet, jet-setting between Hollywood, New York City, and Miami, while making a permanent impression on many of Hollywood's biggest A-list names and bodies. I think it all started after I tattooed Kylie Jenner. And if you're looking for an appointment, good luck. His own father and closest friends have been trying unsuccessfully for years. Uh, he's not had time for me. <laughs> I, I, I almost five, six years waiting in the line. <laughs> I'm in the same boat too. Either he's in LA or he's in Miami, he's in New York. Uh, you know, he's all over the place. Not bad for a kid who immigrated from Mexico at age 10, not speaking a word of English, and would spend weekends recycling scrap metal just to help his family make ends meet. This was our first source of income here in the United States. But this is not just another brag story about a celebrity tattoo artist. To really understand what makes the story of Rafael Valdez truly unique, all you need to do is listen. Art, imagery, symbols, They've been the tools of storytellers since the beginning of time. Stories that were written here, here, and of course, here. My personal story started here, but now I run a creative agency in Los Angeles. Along the way, I started writing down my own story, like this, which meant spending hours up close and personal with true ink artists gifted at telling stories on human canvases. These are the stories of the storytellers themselves. This is Think and Ink. On a not so sunny LA afternoon, I caught up with my friend Rafael Valdez for what would be my fourth tattoo session with him when he's not racing back and forth for clients between Miami and New York, or making special house calls to hotspots in Malibu and Hollywood, this unmarked, nondescript spot in downtown Los Angeles is where you may be lucky enough to squeeze in a new piece of art with him. Is it okay if I document? Of course. Even though he holds a smartphone more than a tattoo needle these days, Raphael is someone the biggest names in Hollywood, music, and pro sports reach out to when they want new ink. The next thing you know, it was all over like Spanish television. Mark Anthony gets a new tattoo and da da da. So he literally put me on the map, and then his word of mouth was what led me to tattooing literally every celebrity I tattoo nowadays. And with a powerhouse client roster like that, it's a safe bet Raphael spent years apprenticing under seasoned tattoo artists, right? Wrong. Miami came up. Wait, you watching the TV show to learn, learn what yeah. they're doing? Yeah, we're like, oh, so that's how you put the needle. I learned so much from that TV show, it's insane. I didn't know anything. I would, I, I'm telling you, I mess people up. <laughs> oh yeah, Sam, I remember like the first big tattoos that I did, they came off the very next day because I dug in too much. They came off there, they literally came off. Yeah. And what would you say to the, <laughs> oops? Yeah. <laughs> I'm new at this. You get, what you, you get what you pay for. What was it like uh, coming to LA from Mexico? So I remember it being like really tough, the actual transition. And then when we finally were over here, you know, new schools, new friends, no English. Um, it was all very uh, strange. As I got older, stepping into junior high, I think that's where it got tougher because kids are not so innocent anymore at that age. Uh, you know, we lived in Hispanic communities. So literally everybody in the school was Hispanic. So our own people were making fun of you know, uh, us. So I, made, I got made fun of a lot. I got bullied a lot um, for being uh, an immigrant. I felt more ashamed. I guess I believed what they were saying. I was a kid, I didn't know how to process it, I guess. 
I loved his story and I wanted to know more. So I spent the next two days going to all the places that has shaped Rafael Valdez, where he worked when he first moved to the US, where he grew up and where you'll find him today. But first, lunch with Rafael's father, Rafael Valdez II, so he could take me back to where it all started. In uh, 1971, my dad worked with everybody in Mexico, yeah. every singer in Mexico. And the big breakthrough with your, with your dad, I guess the biggest breakthrough, right, was Vincente Fernandez? Vincente Fernandez, yeah. Vincente Fernandez, Lola Beltran, Cornelio Reina, Gerardo Reyes, Rosenda Bernal, Valentina Leiva, El Piporro, La India Maria, everybody. What made you decide to move the family to the U.S.? That would have to be a hard decision. Chasing his dreams. As a child, he, when he was brought out here with, by his parents, he always uh, envisioned himself out here. When you, when you got here, that had to have been hard. Very hard, very hard. I do everything work. Uh, I wore on a pickup scar metal. Every, everything we need to get money for it, for my pay my rent, I do everything. Right here, it's very hard. My son Sergio and Rafael, he's come with me and uh, he's come to pick up the, the metal, he's filled up the truck and he entered the truck. Yeah, they working with me uh, very, very hard too. You remember those days? Yeah. What was that like? What was a typical Saturday or Sunday like with your dad driving around? to get, pick up metal, what, where would you pick it up? Like, what would you dig through? And Mostly it was construction sites. We would look around for construction sites. My job, remember, was to get off and ask if they had any metal, any scrap metal to throw away that we could take. Sometimes when, uh, when they go to the, the, the car shops, you know, we, we go into the, the owner and I say, hey, you got scrap metal to throw away? And they say, yes, I have, but you know what, first, you need to clean everything right here and I give you everything. Perfect, good. And I clean first everything right there, bedroom, everything, everything, and then give me, me my pendant scrap metal. It'd be a trade-off. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember it being fun and then not so fun sometimes. When they, I was one day in my, in my office, thank you, and one friend of mine, he wore in the music, he called me for my telephone and I say, hey, Rafael, I got something new for you. Okay, I, I listened to one, one CD, he bring me one CD, and I say, ah, this, this guy uh, sing very well. Who's this? It's your son, Rafa. Oh my God, that's <laughs> a friend. Yep, a guy who'd spent his whole life discovering some of Mexico's top music artists gets handed a CD of his own son. It was a good thing I had a very small lunch that day because on the way to the scrap metal yard, I got to experience Raphael's driving. Oh man, I came the wrong way again. <laughs> oh, f <laughs> and his insatiable love for honking. I love honking, and I like start losing my patience for this. Make it dramatic. <laughs> Look at that's a second light, man. Come on. Three green lights, man, That's come bad. on. Oh, and yeah, the fact that he was kicked out of the same school, not once, but twice. I went to school here. Right I used to, go, he used to come here in, um, in the summer, yeah. get on that roof, yeah, and then uh, jump into that pool from the From, up from there. the roof? Yeah. I only came here for a minute and then ki they kicked me out. I wonder why. <sighs> was it possibly for like platform diving off the roof? No, 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 it was just being being very destructive. I managed to get kicked out of the same sky school twice. <laughs> and then I got kicked out of this one. And then I got and then I finally graduated from my final school. I guess on the positive side, if you got kicked out of the same school twice, it means you were resilient enough to get back in once. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Here we were, the old scrapyard Rafael and his dad would bring a long, hard day's haul, a place that exchanged sweat and aching muscles for cash to survive. And yours looks good on top of your hat. I want to wear it. <laughs> when I was about 10, 11, 12 years old, we used to come here 
and bring all the bring all the metal that we'd uh, that we would collect the previous day. So we'd be out on the streets all day long, collecting stoves, refrigerator, anything we could find. When we when we would find aluminum, that was like a big payday. It was it, it was tough. It, I mean, I didn't enjoy it because I was a kid. I didn't want to be here at five in the morning, six in the morning, dumping metal. But it was. You know, it's good memories. It just lets me appreciate, like, you know, where I am now, knowing that this is where it all began. From scrap metal to harder and precious metal, going back to the scrapyard really sunk in with Raphael, now reflecting on how far he's come. You know, as a kid, I didn't want to go work and help my dad making money to, for us to eat. Say we ran into a house that was under construction, my dad would make me get off and ask if there was any metal to throw away. And a lot of these times there would be like other kids my age there and I would feel like embarrassed. I would have to, you know, we'd go through dumpsters and go move all the trash. You've come pretty far from where you started. Do you ever stop and put it in that perspective? You know, it's funny actually from, so I live up in the hill, right? So I can see the whole city and I can see as far as to where my first apartment was. I, I, I tell you, you know, I can't see the apartment, but I can see the area. Like, okay, that's where I used to live in that area, right? Like I was telling my, my friend, I was like, that's crazy. I've like, I started over there and look, and now I'm up here. So you can sit outside and see how far you've come quite, yeah. quite literally. Yeah, yeah. Then we hit a swap meet where Rafael worked late night weekends as a kid. We do all the scrap metal for several years and then you saved up to do the swap meet and get a booth. So I just remember being at the swap meet with my dad selling clothes and he would make me, I would have to like sit in the front and like, just like how she did, he would make me like invite people over. When we first came here, all these, all those white lights were like on and there's a stage in the center of the whole thing and there's people performing and it was like, whoa, like it was like a big, like a big step up at that time. We would sell shorts, shorts and t-shirts. Yeah. So I would have to say, you know, cheap shorts. Stop by, keep it in Spanish. in Spanish, all in Spanish. How do you say in Spanish? Um, barato el short, pasele, pasele, barato el short. Look at this. Ah, my finger stuck. <laughs> oh. Did you really? Look at my nail. Ah. Wait, but you, you own an auto body shop, but you just got your finger jammed in a car part. That's supposed to happen to me, not to you. It's Justin Bieber. You know that, right? <laughs> I think they were making fun. It's Justin Bieber. Okay. Don't tell anyone else. Okay, I won. Thank you, thank you. Man, I remember those setting up those tables. Oh my goodness. It really is bringing up a bunch of memories. That's actually nice, huh? That could be like a decor thing. Look at that. Actually, like, nice. I wonder if it works. My daughter says, my 13 year old, she makes her own clothes. Are you gonna get it? I might get it for my daughter. You sure? Yeah? Make it 40 bucks today, how about that? 40? 40 bucks. Okay, that's good, I'm gonna get 40 for, for that and for I the- you that one. Okay, that's very fair. Don't worry, I got it. It's all me. No worries, I'm good. You just hold my album cover. Yeah, another thing I learned about Raphael, he's a chronic, chronic prankster and practical joker. Oh, oh who, who did we hit? Oh, oh who, who did we hit? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm not. What? <laughs> what, did we fuck up your car? No, that was a joke. I hit the side of the car. I hit the side of the car. This is fucking why he got kicked out of three high schools. This is why he got kicked out of three high schools. Oh, the same one twice. Oh. I'm more worried about your car. I'm like, who'd you hit? Who'd you hit your car? <laughs> oh my oh, God. Dang, dude, I've never seen someone get so scared. I, well, I, thought, I thought you fucking killed someone. <laughs> On to our next stop, Raphael's church, and hopefully some redemption for nearly giving me a heart attack with his fake crash gag. Pastor Mo, 
Pastor Mo. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. This is this is one of those churches that lets people with tattoos in, right? I mean, you stop that at the door. <laughs> like, I'm just making no, sure. No. Well, you know what's cool about it? I mean, even the pastor's got the tattoos. The pastor's got yeah. tattoos. <laughs> so, Did, didn't know that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, no, no, definitely tattoos are welcome here. So. So, these are my kids. Yeah. That's a cross right there. And then this, these are, this is my arm before Jesus. <laughs> this, is my, this is my BC, so a bunch of like, you know, Aztecs. Be, before, before Christ, yeah, before, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and how did you meet this, this, this guy here, man? I met Rafi probably a few years back. And we just hit it off with them. We fell in love with their kids and him and his wife. And It's always been really clear that God and spirituality is a big part of your life. Yeah. You've always said that. You've been pretty vocal. Where do you think that comes from? And, and how does that play into your life and everything you do? I feel like once God touches your life, no matter which way you go, or even if you stop going to church, or even if you try to like put God to the side, God, God always like, you know, he doesn't let you go. Like, it, it, like he tugs at you. One of the things I, I think I like about Rafa is that regardless of who he interacted with, his faith was a big ass, a big part of his life. It was huge. Uh, he's gotten a tattoo on some of the world's m most famous people, you know, and everybody that he's introduced me to knew about his faith. You know what I'm saying? And so I think to, for me to see someone so gifted, so talented, and so well known and well liked, he was never ashamed of who he was and who God was in his life. Uh, being a pastor, you uh, uh, have uh, a strong connection to the greatest storyteller of all time, right? That's was, it. Right? Yeah, we, yeah. And that would be. Because Jesus constantly spread his message through stories. If Jesus were here today, or, or if uh, Raph could go back in time and yeah. tattoo him, what type of tattoo would you think? <laughs> what, what type of tattoo would Jesus want? Wait, wait, wait. I don't think he'd say, put, yeah. my, put myself on me. What type of tattoo would Jesus have? Yeah. You, you, you know what? I don't know. That You know what? Well, I think he would tattoo the nails that were going to go in his hands and the nails that were going to go in his feet for the love he had for humanity. That's a really good answer. Yeah, right. So <laughs> if that was it, it would have to be the nails and the thorn and, and reminder of the love that he had for humanity. Remember when I uh, when I sang the song at the other, at the first church? I do remember that. He sang, he sang tremendously. Yeah. What song did you sing? It's called um, Amigo, which is friend in English. How's it going, man? Sing, sing like a couple notes. Tú eres mi hermano del alma, realmente el amigo Que en todo camino y jornada está siempre conmigo I can't, I don't remember the words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he definitely rocked it that day. Did you hear about Tommy? Yeah. Oh, remember yeah. Tommy? Yeah, I heard. So, uh, apparently he started uh, using again. Mm. He started, uh, he relapsed, he, he overdosed in the, wow. in the hotel room. That's right. And I was in, I remember I was in the studio recording uh, recording a song that I just released recently. Right. And um, I was like, yo, Tommy, like I haven't heard from him. I called him, no answer. And then I called his room, his business partner mm. that he was always in touch with because they were like working on a business. I grab my phone and I go to my messages and it's him and he's like, yo, Tommy's dead. Mm. And I said, oh, I like my blood drop. I know you loved him. Yeah, man. You loved him dearly. I did, I, care, I cared for him a lot. How you do now? I'm good now, I miss him. It should make you want to spread that message loud because there's so many people struggling with addiction. Let's walk, let's walk. Like Tommy was a big tattoo guy, yeah. right? So I hit, we were in a group chat uh, coordinating stuff for his funeral and stuff. I was like, yo guys, listen, I just had this idea. Like, per I personally want to get something in remembrance of him. Yeah. So if anybody's open to wanting to get something in remembrance of Tommy, like, let's get together and do it. Yeah. And it got to Demi. So Demi came over and she got a little tea for him, right? Wow. And it was on, everything it was it was on e news tmz it was it was viral it went viral yeah. and uh tommy's name and demi's message about struggling right. you need to find someone get help tell someone yeah and uh so then he hit me god used his death his message yeah. because if one person through that tv show yeah. or through that link through that report or whatever yeah. See, one, well, like just one single person out of the millions that saw this sees that message and gets help mm. and now gets to live another day because of that, yeah. then his death just served that purpose. Yeah, and it wasn't in vain. It wasn't in vain. And you know it wasn't just one person. No, I mean, there's millions that yeah, saw yeah, that. Yeah, millions that saw that. Oh, I love you. Yeah, we'll see you. It's a good to see you. Love you. Pastor Mo. Hey. You're a good man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Let me give you guys a bless you. Tommy was one of like my first friends that I like got introduced to. So when I met Tommy, Tommy used to work here. 
Because these clubs out here in Hollywood, like you gotta like know someone, you gotta be someone like to get let in. But luckily Tommy working here, that was like my way in here. Cause that, this used to be the hot club back then. On your own, you did it. You added a Tommy tattoo recently. So you did that yourself? Yeah. With the angel was there, but you added Tommy boy? Yeah. And you know, you think about memories and tattoos and stories and you know, a tattoo I got many years ago, right after Terry, who was my best friend after he died. And I had written a, a, a poem for his funeral in the last line of the, of the poem and it's tattooed on, on, on uh, my, my arm. And it says, the angels like reggae, so I crank it up loud, sipping tequila on a stool in a cloud. And I have a big cloud on my arm. That. Yeah. That's cool. It made me feel better. It reminded me that, that like, you know, he, he was up there having fun. I believe that. I mean, I go based off what the Bible says, what the Word of God says. God, the Bible says that um, we will meet again in heaven. So I don't have a doubt in my mind that he's up there. And it's just a matter of me getting there. We'll reconnect up there and continue see, our see, friendship. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't noticed by now, Raphael's friends, they're like family to him, which yeah. is why when he's not at home with his own family, he's with his other family, who he happens to own a collision center with in West Hollywood. This is uh, my collision center uh, here in the city of West Hollywood, California. So welcome, welcome. You guys like do real stuff here. Did you crash all these yourself or do you yeah, have help? Yeah, no. <laughs> this, this is like, oh, man. see I, driv I drove with you now, so now it doesn't make sense. I think this is like your personal garage. We've had anywhere from Tyga, Kylie Jenner. We've had a bunch of athletes here. So Tyga brings his car here, yeah. Ty Kylie Jenner, if she's Gets an offender bender maybe or something. Yeah, we've had, we've, had, we've had our cars in here. So how did you get from tattooing to like being an auto collision center? The, uh, the owner of this shop came to me uh, many years ago and started getting tattoo work done. We built a friendship, uh, a very uh, good friendship. And then um, little by little, I started bringing business into the shop. Yeah. And then uh, I ended up bringing too much, yeah. <laughs> too much business and uh, so we turned it into a uh, like a partnership. Uh, I mean, we're more than friends. We're family now. He's he's um, soon to be godfather of my newborn, him and his wife. Uh, I love his kids like my kids. He loves my kids like they were his. And uh, yeah, we. It's. I mean, he's he's my best friend. So this is Nick. Nick Drew. Hey. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you, man? Yeah, how are you? So he said you can take off your shirt and show the tattoos he's done. So... Uh, <laughs> uh, <I'll... laughs> show us anyway. What, what do you got? Well, my daughter's uh, names. Yeah. Some diamonds. Wow, you got some nice... You got a lot of really great work. So you guys want to show us around? I mean, this place is sure. really, really rad. So um, this is where all the body work happens. This is where... We take apart cars and fix cars. What are you guys doing to that Range Rover? We're replacing the frame in the front, which tucks into under the seat of the car. I mean, that thing looks like a bomb went off inside. <laughs> like I, I hope nobody was hurt. Yeah. No, no one's hurt. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've been here, you know, for years now, and it still surprises me and amazes me, like the stuff these workers could do. The way they put things back together and the, and the amount of time that they do it, it's, a, it's all in art. Like, it's all in art, exactly. And the precision, I mean, when you're putting the front end in on this, what I'm guessing you can't be off by probably like a millimeter. No, of course not. This is an awesome operation you guys put together. Really cool. It's it's, it's fascinating everything that comes from, you know, your, your life from tattooing, everything it leads into, you know, the relationship and... This is probably the, uh, the like the, funnest part of my life when it comes to like, yeah. you know, outside of family. This is where um, where I have my fun. You know, yeah. this is it's hanging out with these guys. It's, 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 it's fun. It's not work. It doesn't feel like work. Uh, most of the time I end up asking myself why I come, but I show up the very next day. <laughs> From 
scrap metal. That's a bit of a full circle. This would have been probably a shop that we would have stopped by and asked. I would have been a kid asking him if he had scrap metal to throw away. Yeah. Uh, tattooing has opened a lot of doors. It's opened a lot of uh, uh, opportunities and it's led me to meet like, you know, a lot of amazing people. But like most important besides like the cool celebrities that I've met, like I came across friends that I consider now family, him being number one. And um, you know, I'm, he, like I always tell him how grateful I am. Besides all the jokes and all the nonsense that we yeah. <laughs> we talk, like deep down inside we know what we mean to each other and like he knows, he knows, um, how, how much it means to me and how grateful I am for the, the, the opportunity because, you know, at the end of the day, it was an opportunity that he gave me. And after all his successes in life, his true passion remains in his DNA, the music that runs through his veins, mariachi. So the best thing about having talented friends in a town like Los Angeles, barter. For me, I got to spend a few days sharing a cool story and a new piece of art to commemorate my passion for storytelling. For Raphael, I agreed to shoot his new music video. I think Drew's the only director that I know that gets hair and makeup done. Oh man, that's so rude. I gotta look pretty for you. She got hair and makeup for you, so I mean, literally, she's like, I got hair and makeup for Rafi. I'm like, for one person? You take advantage of that. This is true. You're paying her for the I'm day. I'm sitting in the chair. <laughs> I'm doing my nails as long. <laughs> Thank you. What's You're up, welcome. So funny, boy. Rafael's gonna, Rafael's gonna cue you guys in. We're gonna do three full passes. I just wanna make sure cameras are set. My guy's all good. Three, two, one. Se acabó el amor y el sueño El que le dio motivos a tu vida El que transformó tu alma De niña mujer enamorada que te hizo llorar con desespero, pero te hizo feliz tan solo con verlo. Se acabó el amor, ay qué lástima. Yep, he's good at this too, really good. Nunca volverá a hacerte un daño. I know, good job. Really good, good. Okay. You happy? Yeah, good for the team. Got it. That's great. Get up for our man. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So spending two full days with Raphael, I felt I learned so much about him, his story, his life, but yet I'd still only scratch really just the tip of the iceberg. 